Like my previous video, this one will also be prologue only. Chapters 1 to 54, Season 1, you know. So, among the prologue's cast of characters, I think the most complex one in terms of how meticulously we see his environment shaping him and how the details of his actions inform us of his nature is Thorfinn, maybe aside the other protagonist, Askeladd. I know Thorfinn's reputation, of course. He is one of the least liked characters for reasons that I definitely understand. He is always either moody or angry, he screams a lot, only ever cares about one thing, never says anything interesting, has little to no agency, doesn't develop at all, is pretty annoying, he's short, doesn't ever listen, plus he's a major asshole and stupid. Very uncool. And often the people that do find him cool don't tend to like the rest of the series. Despite that, there's enough going on here that he warrants a video mostly about himself. You can't really not talk about Askeladd here. I also feel like I have to talk about the anime here, even though these are strictly manga analyses. Personally, as is tradition with mega fans, I will nitpick and complain about absolutely everything in the adaptation. The manga is the thing I like. I'll try to keep it to a minimum though, that's not why I'm bringing up the anime for. It's because I know a lot of people have only experienced the adaptation and I want to point out the differences and contrast the manga with it a bit. Thorfinn has by far the most changes around him. One and a half episodes of filler, lots of little changes here and there, and a brand new side plot near the finale. Is the actual character any different? Not really. It's more the attitude and the way the show tries to sell you that character. Just way more... Well that. Let's quickly go through the good, the bad and the ugly here. Episode 5, all original content, it's the best one. All the characters act exactly as they should, this is exactly what I would imagine was going on after the death of Thors, with attention to the details. Very little to complain about here. The first half of episode 6, Thorfinn's first kill, is the worst one. Clumsy in what it tries to convey, melodramatic, I think it dodges the nuance this event could have. Last one is a mixed bag, Askeladd has some extra venom to throw at Thorfinn, this actually affects him and leads him to a mini version of the development that happens to him in the finale. This all culminating in a new scene with Leif and then Thorfinn changing his mind again. In my opinion, borderline out of character for Thorfinn and waters down his big scene with Askeladd later, plus interrupts one of the best sequences in the story. But the talk with Leif is fantastic. It shows a thorough understanding of Thorfinn's character and reaches the correct conclusions, so I'm gonna come back to this. So the anime feels like it wants you to pity Thorfinn, think more about his terrible situation, to believe that he's a good person deep inside, things you'd usually want for a protagonist, it's reaching for that kind of appeal a bit more. In the manga, it's different. No comforting Hordaland with talk of Vinland, less pained expressions. No cutting out the scene where Thorfinn ignores a woman about to be raped, yes this would obviously be a common situation, but actually showing it is different. The manga isn't afraid at all to let the reader think however they want of its protagonist. Think he's utterly unlikable? That's just fine. Here's a variety of colorful, engaging characters, and the Thorfinn stuff will be kept as brief as possible, so you don't get too tired of him. Again, I'm well aware the anime doesn't have too sterilized the version of Thorfinn, and the manga definitely also has humanizing moments for him. I'm just contrasting the two to find the subtle changes that work together to achieve a slightly different reader-viewer experience. Okay, now that we've established what's in the manga and what's not, let's tackle it from the beginning. The first chapter introduces the characters and the setting, with a little plot hook at the end, and then the second elaborates on their characters and dynamic. Thorfinn wants revenge on Askeladd for his father's murder, specifically in the form of a fair and honorable duel to the death so he works for Askeladd to earn that duel as a reward. But despite being as strong, if not stronger than Askeladd, he's easy to read and prone to anger, so Askeladd always comes out on top, through trickery. And Askeladd seems really convinced that Thorfinn's not going to try to kill him outside the duel because he's a slave to pride and his own past. A comment immediately validated when Thorfinn gets really frustrated at Hordaland mistaking him for a slave. A free man, a warrior, See? Wants to think highly of himself. And this interaction shows a couple of things. Aside Thorfinn being insensitive and childish, Thorfinn has a very Viking mentality. 
Might makes right. The strong hunt, the weaker hunted, winners and losers, wolves and sheep. You get the idea. You'll see a lot of this later. To him, Hordaland's inability or unwillingness to just kill her masters and escape slavery is her own fault. The problem is her weakness. If you're not gonna run away and kill anyone that hunts you, well, you will obviously stay a slave. The only one to blame is you. And if you were to ask him, he would probably agree with this dude. He'd rather die than be a slave. So to him, it's a choice either way. If you're already seeing the contradictions in Thorfinn, well yeah, that's the point, he's a major hypocrite. We'll get to that eventually. As we transition to the flashback, the story leaves us with questions. How does a normal kid, this guy's son especially, turn into this? Why is Thorfinn so obsessed with killing Askeladd in a duel? To be honest, the societal pressures that the Norse youth grow up with is a subject that the series explores throughout a lot of arcs, and it's not condensed here. We just have little hints and details and visual storytelling that you're expected to notice since you've been cued to pay attention to Thorfinn. But yeah, Norse society glorifies war and warriors. Respect and honor are things people live by. Young men will jump into any opportunity to prove themselves. Kids play by reenacting battle, that is the fantasy. At one point, Thorfinn injures another kid while playing, and you'd expect the father to be worried or maybe a bit angry, but he's anything but. In fact, he praises Thorfinn's ability to hurt and comments on his potential as a warrior. Out of everything, I think this is the most telling. This is the environment Thorfinn grew up in. Even in the earliest chapter we see him, he's insulted at the notion that his ancestors would run away from Norway, saying that Leif is lying, but his father will not. It's no surprise then that when Floki comes in and Thorfinn learns that his dad was a legend of a warrior and you have this whole fleet of Jom's Vikings bowing to him and he gets soured with all this excitement and praise for his father, it's no surprise that he latches on hard to all this positive feedback. Now he has this pride welling up in him that is the source and he feels like he has to preserve it and live up to that image of Thor's. But while trying to find a real weapon, Thor's comes in and abruptly shuts him down. I can see how this might feel like a bit of a betrayal to Thorfinn. Here's Thors, the center of this whole situation, now scolding him, treating him like a child and ruining his high, while everyone else gets to have fun and go to war with him. Of course, he can't really grasp what Thors is telling him. Like a kid, he interprets it in a very simplistic, face value way. And Thors isn't too good at explaining it either. Thorfinn doesn't know the implications of Loki's visit. But most importantly, what his father tells him is against everything he's been taught to believe, against everything everyone else is saying. Who's he gonna believe? This one person who, yes, he greatly admires, but is currently making him feel bad about himself, or the rest of the world that he already understands and that also celebrates this idealized version of that person he greatly admires. So Thorfinn decides to see and believe what he wants to, claiming that Thor is lying. And during Askeladd's ambush, he gets exactly what he wants. The great and honorable warrior Thors, that beats up 30 bad guys at once. He gets so into it that he completely misses the comment about Floki's involvement, by the way. By the time the ordeal ends, he is obviously devastated, and not only because of his father's death, but because of how it happened. Now, Thorfinn clearly doesn't understand what just went down, he can only see the surface. But he sees himself being held hostage, as the reason Thors died. If you've seen my last video, you know I think that did not matter at all, but that is how Thorfinn feels. This happened because he was weak and a liability. So he grows up despising that weakness and that feeds his current mentality, along with a Viking life, of course. That's where the callousness comes from when talking to Hordaland. He's projecting, seeing his old helpless self. He will not run away from his problems. Another thing Thorfinn misunderstands has to do with Thor's use of honor. I doubt it was anything else other than a tool to get himself to a more advantageous position. Thor's proposed an agreement that could only benefit him in the hopes that someone like Thorkel would take the bait. Askeladd was not what he was fishing for, but good enough. I'd rather leave honor for another video, I'm already rambling too much. But the long and short of it is, what Vikings would consider honor wouldn't be something Thor's would respect. Desertion is absolutely not honorable. The whole warrior code thing definitely appeals to Thorfinn though. He eats that shit up. And so the duel becomes a part of his father that Thorfinn idealizes. Something that Askeladd defiled. Thor's won. He was stronger. And so he should be alive 
and Askeladd should be dead. That injustice is what bothers him the most. Thor's warrior's honor was disrespected by Askeladd's betrayal of his promise. So for the next 11 years, Thorfinn will be trying to right that wrong, and might is right. Killing Askeladd in a duel would not only mean Thorfinn getting revenge and regaining his honor, but also that the ideals Thor's died with, the ones Thorfinn sees and understands, would prevail against Askeladd's dishonesty and trickery. Justice. This is his way of honoring Thor's memory. As for the real Thor's, yes, Thorfinn remembers that part too, at least subconsciously. We see it in his dreams and that fuels his guilty conscience, but at the end of the day, it amounts to nothing. Thor's teachings are just something he can't rationalize and therefore can't follow, and that at least is understandable. Okay, let's talk about empathy and apathy a bit. Everyone has the capacity to be a good person. Everyone has the capacity to empathize and understand others. It is an ability ingrained in humans. But these are things cultivated through community, interaction, social experiences, the judgments and examples of other people, especially the ones close to you. In the next 11 years after the death of Thor, Thorfinn has lived in isolation. It's not just that he's away from his family, he has absolutely no one to interact with. I'm glad the episode 5 filler got that right. Thorfinn survives on his own, he eats on his own, he trains on his own, no he's not being fucking homeschooled by Askeladd, please. And he doesn't want to be associated with any of the Vikings more than he needs to, so he intentionally keeps his distance. This leads to a certain mental and moral stagnation. He's stuck being the same child from 11 years ago, just colder and more physically capable. No other opportunity to grow. A very notable interaction is with the English family in chapter 17. The unexpected family environment manages to pull some emotional strings in him. He probably never had to deal with such a situation as a Viking. Killing enemy soldiers is straightforward enough, but this? Of course he knows what he has to do, he will have to learn a pretty nasty lesson though. He tells them to run, he signals the Vikings, he is forced to kill some English soldiers and then the mother sees him. And that shocks him, the betrayal, the heartbreak. To more specifically describe what he feels, note that the big reaction is when he looks at her face. He feels judged, maybe even embarrassed to be seen like this by this person. Here, there should be some semblance of recognition that what he is doing is wrong, because of her, and that threatens him and his purpose. So he resolves himself, he takes a breath, and moves along like this never happened. See, the more empathetic Thorfinn is, the more he will hurt when killing people and ruining families, so he has to distance himself and commit to his simplistic might is right mentality. It's his duty alone to deal with his problems, so he expects the same of others. Their problems are simply not his responsibility. This is Thorfinn's road to apathy. I mentioned before Thorfinn's guilty conscience. I hope you didn't take that to mean guilty for the people he kills and the atrocities he takes part in. Thorfinn, at least the one we see after the complete time skip, does not care. He has succeeded in growing completely detached from any human tragedy around him. Now, I haven't reread the prologue yet for the script, but I'm very confident you wouldn't find any scene that would hint otherwise for Thorfinn. And I really respect his character for this. He's the protagonist, but that doesn't make him special or better than any other Viking. Everyone has the capacity to be a good person, and everyone is a product of their environment. There's nothing inherently different between Thorfinn and, like, Askeladd's men. Yes, they rape and pillage, and they enjoy what they are doing, unlike Thorfinn but that's simply due to a difference in circumstances. He never got the chance to enjoy war. The other Vikings get to celebrate with their buddies, and they immediately profit from their victories, which creates a positive feedback loop that draws them in. For Thorfinn, there is no victory until Askeladd is dead. He gains absolutely nothing from the battles themselves. In fact, doing Askeladd's dirty work must be humiliating to him. It's not a pleasant process. Nevertheless, they were all thrust here by the same society, and both led to think in very similar ways. Thorfinn, for the sake of his revenge and his father's memory, has killed countless fathers, brothers and sons, and like every other Viking, he doesn't even think it wrong. He does not think much about it at all. Now, Thorfinn is evidently a certain brand of anime protagonist archetype. Angry Edgelord describes it well enough. But that doesn't mean he is written on autopilot after he is fully introduced and characterized. Because for the next six volumes Thorfinn is almost never the focus, the story cares about the more immediately engaging characters. 
Anyway, there's great care and attention paid in how Thorfinn reacts and interacts with other characters. Attitude towards Canut, contempt for weakness, just like with Hordaland. The need to reaffirm he's an enemy to Askeladd, he's ashamed to be working for him. Sees no purpose in praying for others, believe everyone should look out for and is only responsible for themselves. Reluctance to it with Ragnar and Canute, same, mind your own business. Sympathizes with Canute's struggle to live up to his father's expectations. Yeah, one of the few things Thorfinn lets himself care about. Responds to Thorkel when he acknowledges him as a warrior and asks him for his name. Thorfinn takes pride in being a warrior. Thorfinn bites every single time Thorkel mentions Thor's. He is Thorfinn's main motivation. Thorfinn is probably desperate for any information on Thor's past that would justify the warrior's path he's chosen as something Thor would approve of. Doesn't want to talk about Thor's life himself. He's uncertain. It could reveal unpleasant truths to him. Thorkel proceeds to read Thorfinn like a book and accuse him of not understanding Thor's, not being anything like him and not learning anything from him. That is too close to the mark. This idea threatens him. So he gets angry because that's the only thing he can do. It's a defense mechanism. Leif talking about Ilva and Helga? Again, that threatens his mission, so Thorfinn numbs himself with anger. Vinland? That's interesting. He cares about that while aggressively dismissing talk about his family. And what is Vinland for Thorfinn? Sure, a rich land like that is a dream for any Icelander or Greenlander. Not more for Thorfinn than any other though. Why would he accept this specific distraction from his revenge while he rejects all others? This is what the episode 23 filler gets right. Leif goads Thorfinn to come with him by basically showing his understanding of his struggle. For Leif, it's just as much a matter of honor and duty to Thor's. That immediately places his mission to return Thorfinn on the same level as Thorfinn's revenge. Next, he offers the alternative that Thorfinn is already thinking about. Vinland is something Thor's really wanted to pursue, and something that Thorfinn can also get behind. So following that path could be another way to honor his father's memory, just as valid as killing Askeladd. Of course, it's not entirely positive, it's just a way to redirect Thorfinn's obsession to something healthier. The core problem is still there. Thorfinn would only do that for his father, he himself has no true, substantial motivation to go there. Now, as I've already mentioned, Thorfinn is heavily sidelined by now. His plotline is pretty much reduced to a single throwaway line for half the prologue. More important stuff is happening with Askeladd and Canute, and I think Thorfinn is handled very well in this. The first time I read Vinland Saga, what hooked me the most is this middle part of the prologue. A bunch of characters with different personalities, agendas and alliances are stuck together. How will this turn out? Thorfinn is a great addition to this, offering lots of potential future scenarios for your brain to chew on that I still kind of appreciate even on reread. Like I always thought it felt like a Chekhov's gun situation, having the duel looming in the background of all these delicate schemes, threatening to take Askeladd out at the worst possible time. And in the end nothing really happens, but it's not like Thorfinn takes up a lot of panel time. Ok, Askeladd time. What does he think of Thorfinn? It's clear that he let him live because he thinks highly of Thor's. He did make an oath that he would not hurt them or that he would let them go, it's vague, he could weasel out of it, but Askeladd is someone that values honor and promises in his own way. I like to believe that he wants to see something of Thor's in Thorfinn, sort of a memento. He also does take Thorfinn's quest for vengeance seriously, properly evoking Artorius' name and such, probably thinking it just Thorfinn killing him, his own complicated past with revenge making him sympathize with the angry kid, especially since he surely doesn't feel too good about killing Thor's. Of course, Askeladd is a pragmatist, he is only allowing Thorfinn to follow him because he's useful, and he will absolutely not risk anything for Thorfinn's life, he's completely expendable, won't even keep him fed, Thorkel about to kill him? Mission failed, we're out of here. Let me make this clear, Askeladd never ever did anything for Thorfinn that could have the slightest chance of putting Askeladd in a disadvantage. Let's move on to the climax of the duel plotline. It happens abruptly, without any fanfare, Thorkel and Canute don't even know what it is about, and it is preceded by another, much more meaningful duel, that actually had purpose and leads to some introspection from Askeladd. Say what you will about Bjorn, but he was a sincere guy. He doesn't nurse grudges, he's not like Thorfinn, he says. Bjorn understands that as a Viking he is in no position to feel resentment if he is attacked or killed. He's no hypocrite, and he has no hatred in his heart. Askeladd is like Thorfinn, and Bjorn calls him out on that, 
trying to understand why he's like this. He's clearly suffering from it. There is a case to be made that even though Askeladd intellectually understands that the whole Viking warrior culture will never be fixed by just more violence, I mean, he sounds like he's tried, that this hatred boiling in him still affects his decisions, making him a much more destructive person in his crusade than any other simple Viking, much more than he needs to be. For example, and I might be reaching here, but I find it really suspicious that after Gratianus tells him that Wales has been a victim to raids, by specifically Mercia, and talks of putting down Mercia, Askeladd proceeds to make his biggest mistake in the story, changing course to go directly through Mercia, where he would potentially need to raid it. Especially after having fun torturing an English captain, and then giving him a history lesson about how Mercia deserves this, and he can't really complain. Even his big moment in the finale. Killing Swain was inevitable for the situation, but doing it himself then and there I'm just wondering would he have done it if it didn't get personal, sacrificing himself for Canute and Wales, but also leaving out his violent fantasies. Cause in the back of his head the solution has always, paradoxically, been bloody. The final judgement, Ragnarok, Artorius striking down the barbarians. The Danish half has certainly corrupted the blood of Artorius in him, or there wasn't any difference in the first place. After being questioned like that by Bjorn, now Askeladd has to face Thorfinn. He used to respect the duel, somewhat, but it has grown to be a complete farce, especially with this contrast. In a way, Thorfinn is a reminder of all of Askeladd's failures. His long-term plan still haven't paid off yet, and the band he has been growing all these years is all dead, with only Thorfinn remaining. And he's Askeladd's creation, through and through, exactly the type of warrior Askeladd hates, with his own worst aspects added in on top, taunting him. It's like everything Askeladd touches he destroys or somehow corrupts, even the good parts in him, when he passes them on to Thorfinn and debatably Canute, they kind of take a twisted form. I think, after he beat Thorfinn here, Askeladd at least for a moment genuinely thought about killing him. Maybe he even thinks of him as a disgrace to Thors, that's an interesting idea. I mean, he did pull a Thors by throwing his sword, imitating him, taking his role in this reenactment. A really effective insult to Thorfinn, a claim that he's actually the one closest to Thor's ideals. So after the duel, Askeladd basically calls Thorfinn a clown for not having killed him yet, giving as an example his revenge against his father. Of course, for the most part, Thorfinn loses because of his insistence on the duel. Askeladd is much better at reading him, he's just miles ahead of Thorfinn by now. And we have gone over why Thorfinn cares so much about the duel. But if might is right for Thorfinn, how are Askeladd's methods, cheating or unjust? Isn't manipulation and trickery a genuine strength? Or the ability to make alliances and work together with others to achieve a common goal? Is only physical strength and battle smarts valid for Thorfinn? It actually seems so. He even mocks the others for scheming and playing political games, things he thinks are unfit for true warriors. It makes sense for Thorfinn to denounce those methods Otherwise, he would have to accept that his warrior's values are nonsense, that Thor's life was in fact fair game, or that his own actions are not justified, and that he is just as bad as Askeladd. So he's stuck there, trying to shield and prove his contradictory beliefs right. This is going nowhere. And as soon as next chapter, Thorfinn again expresses his unfazed resolve to kill Askeladd, and we've gone back to phase one exactly where we began in chapter 1 of the story. And why would he go back with Leif? Just because we saw him lose the duel? That doesn't matter. It's just another time he lost, a delay for his eventual victory. Nothing has changed. Can you imagine how humiliating it would be for Thorfinn to give up now, after doing Askeladd's dirty work for 11 years, gaining nothing in return? How that would mean not being able to escape the guilt of his involvement in Thor's death? and being forced to reflect on those 11 years, with no distraction or direction for his anger. Note that when Canute kills Askeladd, Thorfinn is desperate to not let it go, and tries to fruitlessly change his target to Canute. So in the finale he is left behind, just eating and cursing alone outside while everything important is happening without him. Thorfinn stubbornly remains rigid, in a moving, changing world. Everyone else has moved on from him, the story, the other characters, the world itself, the readers that by now probably have given up on him, and pay attention to the more interesting stuff, an apathetic character that inspires apathy. 
Meanwhile, Canute, through the hardships he endured, has allowed himself to reevaluate his beliefs and adapt, now becoming an agent of change for the sake of the greater good. Even Thorkel, the image of the ideal Viking, has taken an interest in a different path, longing for something new that could give him meaning more than even the warrior's path he has followed his entire life. And finally, Askelad, a remnant of an old age nearing the twilight of his years, is given one more dawn, one more chance to make an impact, to build a road to a better future, while ironically young Thorfinn represents the old age of mankind withering away. And then the status quo gets destroyed, Thorfinn is emptied of everything that makes him who he is and has to cope with his worst nightmare. Okay, this is pretty much the video, but the afterword is gonna be long. I've left some things I couldn't quite fit in the script naturally. So there's this notion I despise, that Thorfinn actually loved Askeladd like a father and that he only realizes it at the end and that he feels a loss for his death in that way. I've seen this image paired up with his take because he's drawn a bit sad, concerned, and while I don't even think that's the intent here, looking at the manga shows a more clear and for me more interesting picture here. Because it sort of baits you, like Thorfinn's going to have a really emotional response, like cry or something. But on the page flip reveal, it's just pure anger again. Another disappointment, I guess. Although not really. Thorfinn truly has no reason at all to have any positive feelings toward Askeladd. Not even in a weird Stockholm Syndrome kind of way, Thorfinn is neither captive or suffering active abuse from Askeladd, Askeladd has no real power over him, the situation is absolutely Thorfinn's choice. And Thorfinn really shouldn't like Askeladd, that would be very unhealthy. I see nothing supporting this idea in the manga, everything is consistent with itself and has a purpose that this would undermine. Thorfinn's not feeling just any sadness here, it's something very specific. It has to do with the loss of his identity and purpose. He failed himself, he finally, truly lost a duel that lasted for 11 years and left completely empty. And I've heard this a lot. Think of all the things that Askeladd taught Thorfinn, and I'm like, what? Oh, he told him to get alive 5 seconds before he died so he was sure it wouldn't bite him in the ass some way. This after a decade of manipulating Thorfinn so that he keeps doing his dirty work. Like, I'm not doubting the sincerity of Askeladd's word here, but saying this absolutely does not help his case. Thorfinn was the last thing on his mind. Oh, and he told him to fight smarter once because his life was on the line and the second time just because he was pissed. Okay, rant over. About this video, I wish I could have offered a bit more evidence for some of my points, but unfortunately it is from future arcs. If you read through it, pay attention, you will find pieces of dialogue later that are very similarly worded with some stuff I said here. Oh, the chapter 182 bit that is relevant to this video, I thought about it the same way before the chapter came out, I'm taking credit for getting that right. Anyway, with that and my last video, I think I'm done with Askeladd as a character. I've gone over the important stuff here, there's no point making a dedicated analysis video on him. And finally, I'm also done with prologue only stuff. I'm very excited to talk about the other arcs, both because I think less has been said about them than prologue, and also because some are a bit more controversial. Looking forward to some more opinionated takes. I'm done rambling, see you next video.